Okay, thank you for a nice introduction. My name is Michal, and Kuba or Jacob is presenting, uh, he will present some demos after my initial interaction. Uh, we are both from H2 AI, which is a company which is uh, in Mountain View, and we are doing uh, H2O. H2O is machine learning library. And we'll speak about it later, bec uh, because in this talk, we would like to focus mainly on how we can deploy H2O models uh, in, in production environment. And let's start a little bit with like our view of the, what's a scenario, what people are doing, what we can see from our customers, how people are deploying different kind of the models. So the initial pipeline, or we call it like the, the basic machine learning lifecycle always contains something where you need to train a model. And train a model means then you need to take some input of data and prepare this data uh, to the form which is acceptable by some machine learning training process. And this data preparation or data engineering often includes the operations like SQL joins or uh, fetching data from different resources, combining them and preparing to nice a table which you can push to next step of the process, which is actual motion, uh, machine learning uh, training. And this machine learning training is often a process which, is, uh, contain a lot of, uh, which contains a lot of experimentation and a lot of iterations. And the first step often is the uh, operation which we call feature engineering. So you have your data, you understand your data, and you try to uh, do something with them and extract some signal. And the something which you, what you can do is find the missing values. Typical, uh, typical, typical uh, operation if you have noisy data. Or if you have text data, you probably need to featureize or uh, vectorize uh, text data. And it's like nice operation which is normally done by every data scientist who needs to deal with data. And this is highly iter iterative uh, job. So you have data, you try to uh, different operations, and then when you are happy with your form on data, you pass the data to uh, some uh, machine learning algorithm. Again, it is highly experimental work. Machine learning algorithm has a lot of, op uh, lot of, uh, lot of, uh, lot of options, it has a lot of parameters, and you need to know how to set up them, how to deal with them, uh, and how to understand them. And if you are happy with the state, then all this thing, we call it pipeline, can be, uh, can be deployed. So you prepare the data, you featureize, you do some feature engineering, you do model training, and if you are ready, you can deploy it. What it means deploy? So you have some training process, model building process when you prepare the pipeline, so for uh, deployment, you need to record the same operations which you did during the training. So if you fill some uh, missing values during the training, you have to repeat the same operation during the deployment, which is pretty obvious, but uh, it was quite hard to do. The same for the model. So if you train the model, you have to have some uh, form of the model which you can take and deploy to the production. And the, product, uh, the deployment in the production can have different forms based on the technology. It can be Amazon Lambda, it can be REST service, it can be uh, Azure function, whatever it's required by uh, your, uh, your business case. And uh, v this we call basic machine learning lifecycle. And uh, since we are on the Spark Summit, this is perfect job for Spark pipelines. And we would like to show you how to combine the Spark pipelines with h So Kuba will show you, in fact, two examples. The first one is the Spark pipeline which contains h machine learning model. And this is the basic example when you, uh, when you keep uh, feature engineering in the Spark. You are using uh, powerful Spark data mining operations to prepare the data, and then you then you push the data to H2 algorithm. The second uh, the second uh, example will use uh, Spark as well, Spark pipelines, but we will uh, push whole featureization and model building 
to Drive AI, which is another tool from the H2 ecosystem, which implements automatic feature engineering. And we'll show you how, what it means uh, during the demo. So welcome Kuba on the, on the stage, and he will sh show you the actual examples how to do these two scenarios with the uh, Spark and H2. Okay, uh, thank you, Michal, for the introduction. Uh, so I will start with the first implementation of our, uh, of our deployment, and it's uh, using H2 and Spark. Uh, we call it Spark Clean Water. Uh, so a little bit of introduction about this H2 and Spark. H2 is our machine learning library. Uh, it's, uh, uh, we created those algorithms from scratch. They are all distributed algorithms such as like random trees, k-means, deep learning. All those algorithms have the same API unified. And the important is uh, that this library is for machine learning experts. Uh, people, even though we have uh, AutoML, automatic machine learning, people still need to understand a little bit of data science and need to tune the algorithms uh, to, perform, to, to per perform well. Uh, it's, uh, this library also contains lots of advanced features for uh, your needs. Uh, and on top of that, we have also Spark and Water, which is built on top of Spark and H2O, and it integrates the best of both these tools. So we can take uh, our uh, algorithms, which are pretty accurate and, and fast and distributed, and integrate them with Apache Spark, so they can, people can uh, decide whether they want to use MLIP or H2 algorithms uh, next to each other. And we try to integrate Spark and Water with Spark pretty uh, uh, in a nice way. So Spark people, they don't, so we don't have to learn new APIs and actually can use what we are used to do in Spark. So we can uh, use H2 algorithms and H2 transformers inside of Spark pipelines uh, in easy way. So there was a little bit of introduction about the Spark and water and how does this fit to uh, the abstract picture which Michal showed us before. So we can see that it's almost the similar. We just see different boxes. We see the orange box, the uh, black box on the right side, and uh, the, uh, the last box on down there. So the first box, the orange box, we can see that the feature engineering is still is done in Spark. So we can think of this uh, such as maybe stop words remover in Spark pipeline, or SQL transformer, which uh, we give it some data, and we want to do data engineering and data cleansing in Spark. Uh, and for some reasons, because maybe we like uh, H2O, uh, we decided to use Spark and Motor and H2O to do the modeling, do the modeling phase. So the next stage is to take the, take the features, uh, take the transform data, and apply H2O model on top of those data. So that's the black box, and we create a model. The model produced by this stage is called H2O Mojo, and it's the model which we put into, the, into production. And the deployment down there, it can be, as Michal said, a Lambda function, or we can use, in this case, Apache, Apache Spark, uh, which accepts streaming data, uh, and it will run uh, transformations on those data on the input. And the data are transformed like in normal way as uh, is in Spark pipeline, so we can, uh, the Spark transformers, they transform the data, what is on the output, they transform it and create new new column on the output. And the same holds for the H2, H2 transformers. Even though they contain H2 algorithms, uh, H2 models, uh, they perform the same thing. So on the output, you can actually see the uh, predictions. So uh, you can, it's actually really just regular spy pipelines with extra H2 steps inside. And uh, now I'm gonna show a quick demo how this can uh, in, hit with this short demo of uh, like training this pipeline in Spark and Water and the deployment of this demo, uh, of this pipeline. So let me just close these slides. Uh, let me go here. I have prepared a Jupyter notebook. Can you, maybe I can make it a little bit bigger. Uh, so I prepared a short Jupyter notebook and we will just show how to train a really simple pipeline in uh, Spark and Water. So I just need to verify that Spark is running. Uh, I, have this, I have a Spark running, it's in local mode. I just need to do some uh, imports for PySparkling. PySparkling is our import, uh, uh, it's our uh, wrapper for PySpark, uh, our Python, uh, Python, Python client. We need to start the H2O context, it's like Spark context for H2O. 
we need uh, H2O context to be available for uh, doing the, for training the model. Okay, so we have a H2O context available. Basically, it created, it started H2O on all uh, execute, Spark executors we have uh, available. And now I'm gonna start uh, defining the, the pipeline. So the first stage I'm gonna define is a simple SQL transformer. Uh, I uh, forgot to mention, uh, the demo I'm uh, presenting is, uh, uh, we have uh, some uh, internal, internal like machine learning, ma machine learning processes, uh, and what we wanna predict is how long this machine learning process will take. So, it, and it depends on specific platforms, for example, is it Windows, is it Mac, uh, how many rows we have, how many columns, and ba based, on these, based on these metadata, we wanna predict how long the machine learning process will take. So it's like meta application. Uh, so what I'm doing here, I'm just uh, creating simple SQL transformer uh, and I'm filtering all the outliers because I'm not interested in a, in a data which has uh, less than 100 rows because they, would, they wouldn't make sense in our model. So I just created those stage, this, this stage. The next stage is defining uh, H2O AutoML. So it's not Spark stage, it's H2O stage, but it's using the same API as Spark. Uh, so we just, what H2O AutoML does, it just tries to find the best model uh, within the given constraints. So we give it 60 minutes uh, and tell it, okay, give me the best model which you can give me in 60 minutes, uh, 60 seconds. Okay, it's already defined. Now I'm gonna define the, sta uh, the pipeline with the two stages I just defined. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna import the file, it's been fine. I imported the file using H2, so I need to transfer this to Spark data frame because we have different data, uh, data formats. We do different operations than Spark, and Spark does different operations than we, uh, we do. Uh, and now I can train the pipeline. It will take, it will take uh, 60 seconds. And after that, when it's trained, uh, I'm gonna export this Spark pipeline, uh, and I'm gonna show you how, you can, how we can put it in deployment. We can actually see we can actually see that the AutoML is running here. You can probably catch what is happening, but we can see that lots of models are being trained, GBM, uh, using grid search. Okay, so probably another 20 seconds. In the meanwhile, I can just prepare uh, for the streaming demo. Okay, it should be done in any second. Uh, it's uh, almost done, I would wait, I would wait. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so we have the model available. Let me just export it. Uh, and now I'm gonna show you how to deploy this pipeline. What the deployment means that we will start Spark application. We will, we are, we have a data which in S3, uh, they are coming there from our internal, internal infrastructure, uh, from our measurements of the machine learning processes. And we wanna, uh, we wanna these data on the input from S3, so we are reading from S3 uh, and uh, running scoring on these, uh, on these uh, streaming data. So what I can do, I can run this deploy Spark pipeline uh, demo. It will, it, will, it will load the Spark pipeline uh, in, the, in the Python script. Uh, the Spark pipeline contains the Spark transformers and the H2O Mojo model, and it will, it will start doing the transformations on the data on the input. So it will take, uh, it will probably return two empty, two empty boxes, but after that we can see that the output will, will, be, will, will start showing. So we can see the timestamp is just ID and the predicted time is how long the machine learning process took, uh, how long the process took. So we can see that deployment using this simple script is pretty easy, but the most important thing is the script, what is happening uh, inside. So let me just quickly show you how this script looks. Uh, uh, and I'm trying to be, uh, I'll try to be as uh, concise as possible. So the most important thing is this pipeline model load. Uh, 
because we are using just Spark Pipeline. We are not doing anything else. We are not inventing anything new. Everything what we did is wrapped inside regular Spark Pipeline, so you can use this pipeline with H2O steps inside your applications, inside your uh, deployments. So we just load the pipeline, and here, because we are using Spark, we can use this streaming application uh, and deploy it, deploy it, and just run the predictions. So this was the first demo. Uh, let me go back to slides. And uh, the, second, the second way how we can deploy uh, H2 applications is using uh, H2O driverless AI. And why? Uh, the original H2O is for machinery experts, which needs to have some expertise of data science. Uh, but H2O driverless AI can automate most of the, most of the things, such as uh, uh, people need to do some data cleansing, such as uh, handling the NAs or target encoding, and these are the processes which can be automated, uh, which H2O Driverless does. We have uh, automatic feature engineering, which is implement, which is uh, which we created based on our knowledge from six years from our Kegel grandmasters, uh, and all, most of these processes can be actually automated, and the user doesn't need to know anything how it's done inside. He just uh, clicks and we give him the best model given the, given the uh, specified constraints. Uh, so it's easy for people, they don't need any expertise in this area. Uh, how this fits into abstract original picture? Uh, so we can see that we have, again, the similar boxes, except that right now uh, we use Spark just for the data cleansing uh, and data engineering, uh, and we use uh, driverless AI for uh, both feature engineering and model, uh, model training. Uh, and driverless AI can figure based on the given, based on specific application, what the, what the best feature engineering uh, transformations uh, should be done, and it will apply them in the, and export them in the uh, resulting artifact. And the uh, deployment in this case is also very, very similar, except that right now we are not exporting a Spark pipeline, we are exporting a, driverless AI pipeline, which can, be, uh, which can be used as Spark pipeline. And this pipeline already contains all the transformers or the feature transformations and also the modeling stage uh, and can be used in Spark in normal way uh, as Spark pipeline. So we can see that we just, uh, the artifact which we produce uh, from driverless AI is called driverless AI Mojo. It's uh, how, we, how we store our models. And we can, uh, again, use Spark uh, to put this pipeline to production. Uh, so I'll just uh, again show how we can put it into production. So let me just go back to Shell. Let me again prepare the, let me run the script. And let, let's first go here. So this is our uh, driverless AI interface. Uh, people start with this screen where they uh, where they select the data set which they want to use. So we have this Spark AI Summit 2018, uh, which contains the data from the processes of machine, learn, uh, machine learning processes, and we want to run predictions. So I can, run on pred I can click on predict. Uh, I need to select the target column, so I, I'm going to select the T total, which is the total time how long the process took. And I can see uh, three knobs and a bunch of other informations. Uh, and I can configure, configure the machine learning and feature, uh, machine learning processes. Uh, the accuracy specifies how, wanna, how accurate I want to be. It, uh, if, I, if I'm going to increase the accuracy, it's changing the feature engineering, which can be applied. Uh, the same holds for interpretability. For some applications, we don't need interpretability, so we can, uh, we can use most, more features. We can see that the, some features uh, appear here. If you want to increase the interpretability, some features will disappear because we can, it's uh, hard to explain them. And we can also specify time as a time constraint. So if we have more time, uh, we can pro the driver's AI probably decides to use three algorithms in, uh, with uh, higher depth. Uh, and it can maybe train XGBoost with, uh, again, higher depth. Uh, and it will take a little bit longer. So I'll just uh, specify time free. I can see that this left side is changing based on the knob setting, and I can start the experiment. I'm not actually, actually going to wait for the result because I'm running it on CPU. When you have a GPU, driverless AI makes use of it. 
Uh, and this will be like blazing fast, but on the CPU it takes a while. So I have the model already prepared. So let's keep this guy running. And let me again show you how we can uh, deploy this, uh, this pipeline, uh, this driverless pipeline in Spark. So let me run this script again. It's simple script which starts Spark, Spark, uh, Spark Summit application. It's starting uh, uh, with a Python script on the input, and the Python script is loading the pipeline. Uh, and uh, we, are, we are just calling transform on it and uh, passing it again the streaming data from the S3. So we can see that the pipeline was already loaded. And it will sh start showing results in a bit. Yeah, so what we're going to see here, again, the ID, which is the timestamp. Uh, we're also going to see the output from the previous pipeline, so we can compare the results uh, important here and uh, the output from the new driverless AI pipeline. What is uh, important to understand here that we have right now two concepts of uh, like deployment and defining the defining the stage, uh, and the the, in, the difference is that they are for like different audiences. Uh, that for driverless AI, it's all automated, and we can maybe have be, we can probably have better performance and better accuracy of the model because we put a really specific and uh, optimized feature transformations, which we are not uh, doing in H2. So we can see that the uh, the predictions differ, differ a little bit because we have different models, different transformations, uh, and uh, and, and that's it. Okay, uh, I'm gonna show you before, before Michal takes the stage again, I'm gonna show you how the co code looks like. Score both pipelines. And again, I'll skip the, all the technical bits. And again, I can see that I'm creating the uh, Mojo2 object, which is actually uh, Spark pipeline stage, and we can treat it as a regular Spark pipeline. And this Spark pipeline contains all the feature transformations and all the modeling stage created automatically by driverless AI, so we don't need to do anything to create those. And again, I, I'm just running these predictions uh, in infinite loop and showing the results. Okay, I'll keep this guy running, and I'll go back to slides. and. Uh, I'll ask Michal if he can continue with the presentation. Okay, thank you, Kuba. So you saw, in fact, two examples how to deploy H2 models as a part of the Spark pipeline. And this is a whole our focus to follow Spark API to make it transparent for the Spark users, but embed H2 models. And H2 models, they are quite powerful with respect to the features. So if you need some advanced data uh, machine learning, use H2 models. If, you're, if you need some advanced feature engineering, use RAS AI. And just example, you saw the first, uh, first pipeline contain only a single transformer. And the second pipeline, which was generated by uh, the RAS AI, was the pipeline was found automatically. And this is, in fact, projection of the pipeline. So each each uh, edge is the data transformation or feature transformation, including, uh, including some uh, three models inside. And you see that it's non-trivial non uh, pipeline, which is technically uh, hard to deploy and technically hard to manage, and even, uh, even uh, hard to find all this, uh, all this transformation. So that's another message that if you need to, uh, if you need to uh, do some uh, feature engineering, and you are not sure, you are not a skilled data scientist. You can always use data. Uh, you can always use the Rust AI to keep the work, export the result, and just embed the result as uh, embed the uh, the Spark pipeline inside. Uh, embed the uh, the uh, Dress AI pipeline inside the Spark pipeline and run it in your deployment uh, scenario. What we describe in fact was a basic machine learning life cycle, but we understand this is really the baseline what right now people are doing. But of course, as you probably saw during the keynote, that the overall uh, work of data scientists is 
much more uh, complex. So there are like different stages, not only training and deployment, but there is also stages that you need to keep uh, models versioned. You have to keep, you have to monitor them after deployment. Also, you need to document the process, how you get the models. And this is the overall platform what we are focusing right now. So uh, not only training and deployment, but also allow the tools that you can generate documentation from your training process, for example, or store the models. And there's a perfect fit, in fact, for the Spark because uh, of the uh, ML flow uh, effort or uh, the effort in the rest of the Spark ecosystem. We nicely fit there with our uh, H2 models and DRAS AI pipelines. So if you are interested in more resources, you can take a snapshot of this guy and Kuba prepared a web page where you can find a lot of useful links or documentation or examples. You can uh, try Sparky Water, you can download it uh, and uh, deploy some models. You can try Dras, uh, Dravas AI to give you the best result from your data. And uh, if you are happy, if you are unhappy, just let us know, we'll fix it or we'll improve it. And the message is, if you, are, if you need uh, to deploy H2 models, you can do that in the Spark quite easily. Just use Spark pipelines and uh, let it run. Okay, thank you very much. If you have any question, we are here with Kuba on the stage, ready to answer them. Uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you for the talk. So I had a question regarding uh, deploying the models that are trained using Spark, which use sparkling water, how do you uh, deploy them for scoring without Spark? Is, is there? Yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, what we show, we intentionally show uh, the work in scope of the Spark. And internally, we are using a uh, format of the models which we called uh, Mojo format. And this Mojo format is just description of what the model contains. And we can take the description and deploy it uh, without the Spark as a bare uh, Amazon Lambda, or we can uh, deploy it at, at the edge device if it is small enough model. So basically, the Mojo uh, model of deploying models works with this stuff as well, even if the model is trained on Spark. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, got a question about the architecture. Um, mm -hmm. Is is my assumption that you will need a Spark cluster and also some other compute cluster for H2O? Or, so can you explain a little bit uh, that? Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good question. We didn't, we, didn't get, uh, uh, we didn't go to technical details, but conceptually, the basic uh, Sparking Water installation and Sparking Water is a way how to run H2O on top of the Spark. It runs uh, a small uh, or tiny H2 service inside each Spark executor. This is the basic mode. So you don't need a, a separated, uh, H, you don't need separated H2 cluster. You don't need separated computation infrastructure. You just need a Spark job. You attach a Spark water library, and that's it. There is another mode, which in fact Kuba developed. It's a external, external uh, mode. Then you can take Spark job and point to existing H2 cluster. And the main motivation for that, and I also, also mentioned during the keynote, that uh, the workloads are different. So uh, uh, data managing workload needs slightly different infrastructure than machine learning work, uh, workload. So we decided to split the infrastructure and say, okay, you can offload the model training to separated H2 cluster, which can be even shared between the several uh, Spark jobs. And you can do uh, the, machine, uh, the machine learning models there, but still in the Spark, on the Spark side, we need to have a uh, tiny H2 driver, which is uh, communicating with the both cluster, both, with the both sides. So in fact, two deployments, one uh, we call it embedded, on, directly on the top of the Spark. The second one is external. You have a bridge between H2 and Spark cluster. Hi, hello. Uh, is there an option to deploy the H2 model without using sparkling water? Oh, what is an option to deploy the H2 model in a spark pipeline without sparkling water? Without the spark pipeline? Without the sparkling water product. Uh -huh. Yeah. So as I uh, mentioned that, uh, the format of the model is independent of the platform. So you can take it and deploy whatever in whatever platform uh, you have. 
So we have, we call it deployment template. So we show how to deploy that as a REST service. We show how to uh, deploy that as a Hive operation or, or Stormbolt, but it's always driven by the end, end uh, deployment scenario. But the, uh, the, actual, uh, the actual model artifact is independent of the target deployment environment. Okay, just a follow-up question. Is the Mojo a proprietary of H2O? Sorry? The Mojo format, is that a proprietary of H2O? Uh, that's our invention, but it's open. It's, you know, it's a zip file. You can open it. You can see, you can see what, uh, whatever we are storing, how we are describing the models, and uh, that's it. The decision behind that was that, uh, just we have one minute, just to explain the decision, uh, we did a lot of experiments with the formats like PMML or uh, serialization of Python code, and all of them fail for the big models. And from our production uh, use cases, we can see that people are generating big models. And big models, I mean uh, GBM uh, model with 60,000 trees, or which are quite big to represent in XML via the PMML, or it's quite hard to manage as a uh, scikit pipeline. So we have to invent a little bit uh, our format. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all we have. Thank you very much, yeah. Michael and Jacob. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.